How's everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine. For this brief tutorial for this Wednesday, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, I'm going to be talking about ambisonic audio and working with 360 video and how you publish that to YouTube specifically uh, in Premiere Pro CC 2017. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and uh, again, we're working with some 360 content where uh, my colleague Dave Helmley also uh, captured some ambisonic audio. I've got my uh, toggle on for the VR video display, so this is nothing new. Just showing you that we've got this 360 video content, and along with that, we also have this new four-channel wave here, and you can see it's named ambix003.wave. Um, possibly recorded right out of an H2N, I'm not exactly sure. So how do we set up the project first and foremost to make sure that we're doing everything correctly? And what exactly do we need when we're publishing to YouTube? So I'm gonna pull up this little just quick graphic here just before we get into what happens inside of Premiere, because these are kind of the specifics of the audio types that you want. Now, like a lot of the things we, uh, we see, just like in VR where there's lots of different sort of flavors and ways that you can deliver stitched and unstitched uh, 360 content. Premiere Pro wants, of course, equi-rectangular frames. Ambisonic audio is, is no different. It's actually been around since the 70s. Never really had a lot of popularity until recently. Um, but there are a couple of specific things that YouTube wants that, of course, Premiere Pro will support when you're uploading your content directly. So what we're dealing with here are first order ambisonic audio channel layouts. You're gonna hear this or the acronym FOA quite a bit if you do any research on, uh, on ambisonics. ACN channel ordering, that stands for ambisonic channel number, channel ordering. SN 3D normalization, which stands for the Schmidt semi-normalization method. And you'll see here that it's got all of this kind of channel mapping where channel one is zero, channel two is one, channel three is two, and channel four is three. Most of this isn't gonna mean a heck of a lot to you. What is going to mean a heck of a lot to you is this little bit right here about use the metadata tool to insert spatial audio metadata. Well, the cool thing is that if you're working with Premiere Pro, if you're working with these proper four channel uh, ambisonic audio files, you don't have to do that. We've already done that work for you. So just like when you were publishing your 360 or VR video content in the previous release, Premiere Pro automatically tags and flags for VR 360 video content and ambisonic spatial audio content. So when it gets up to YouTube, it already knows what to do. This is awesome. Again, you can find all these specs on YouTube. This is where I, I uh, extracted this, uh, this graphic here. They have their own metadata tool to do that. We already do that for you automatically. And then there's just a couple other things here which are kind of less, less important, but you'll see this when we get into the export. Your MP4 files require AAC encoding with the 4.0, meaning the four channel layout. And I'll show you where that is inside of Media Encoder and movie files require either AAC or PCM. And that actually speaks a lot to the actual formats. So again, you're gonna see a couple different ones out there. Um, I'm trying to remember now, the, oh yeah. So the original was uh, AMB, which was based off of the, uh, the wave, wave format extensible, basically linear PCM format. Uh, the newer one and the one that actually um, YouTube and Google have standardized upon, which is essential for today's presentation because we're talking about publishing to YouTube, is AmbiX. And again, that, H, uh, that H2N is gonna create AmbiX content. If, you, uh, if we look back here into Premiere, you can actually see that this is a WAV file, but again, uh, encoded into that AmbiX format. So a couple different flavors out there. This is just some good stuff to know uh, when you're publishing directly to YouTube. And again, that AmbiX format is what YouTube wants and we support that, so that's what we're gonna focus on today. Okay, so when you're in Premiere Pro uh, and you're building up a sequence, now as with all media, you can always take your 360 content, and if I just pull some of this up here, I think I've got these in uh, easy to find folders, here we go. So I could always just take my video content, which in this case, this is uh, 360, and you can see shot 2880 by 2880, and I can right click or control click and choose new sequence from clip to build me a sequence in the proper frame size, frame rate, aspect ratio, basically having all the, all the information that we need um, for that video content. However, what I wanna show you here is under the new item icon, let me zoom in so you can see that there, at the bottom of our project panel, if we go to new sequence, let me zoom back out, you're gonna notice that in the menu item here, under VR, 
we have a bunch of new presets. Presets are always a great way to kind of get you started because again, the VR world is really, it's in its infancy. It's just beginning. So this is a good way to ensure that not only if you're working with a particular frame size, monoscopic or stereoscopic, but specifically now you've got this four channel ambisonic spatial audio that you want to be able to preserve with your VR uh, or uh, 360 video content. We've got presets specifically that are gonna to conform to those formats. So if I were to twirl down, say, monoscopic here, and go into the monoscopic settings, you can see that we offer a couple of different presets. Now, of course, you can make your own. Uh, in fact, it, I'd say it's missing, oh no, it does have it. I was gonna say, uh, it, it doesn't have my um, Gear 360, but in fact, it does. Anyone shooting with the Samsung Gear 360, um, which is touted as sort of 4K, Technically though, it's not, when I think Ultra HD 4K, many of us think 3840 by 2160. What you actually see, oh, whoops, sorry, zoomed out there. What you actually see is that it's 3840 by 1920. We got you covered, yeah, we've already got the presets for you. So again, ambisonics. So we're gonna choose something with ambisonics. And in fact, the content that we've got there, that's stereoscopic, you saw it was 2880 by 2880 ambisonic. So here's where now we start to get into some of the importance of reading the dialog boxes. Because if you're going to build a, a sequence and you want to use ambisonic audio, there's one little preference that you need to change manually to make sure that it publishes and actually previews uh, in, in your sequence properly. So you can see when you choose editing, equirectangular, VR, 2880, and again, your frame size can be different. Within Premiere Pro's audio preferences, ensure that multi-channel mono media default audio track option is set to adaptive, okay? This will assure ambisonic audio media is properly managed as adaptive multi-channel. Very, very key to this process. If you do not do this, it is not going to work properly. So how do we ensure that that happens? Okay, well, let's go up to our preferences here on the Mac Premiere Pro preferences audio on the PC edit preferences audio. And inside your audio preferences, under default audio tracks, again, by default, multi-channel mono media will show use file. Eh, you don't want that for ambisonics. You have to set that manually to adaptive. Once you do that, you're good to go. It's that simple, okay? And similarly, uh, if you need to create um, tracks in, a, in an existing timeline, just make sure you're making an adaptive track and then you can bring your ambisonic or ambix audio files in there, okay? So now that we've set that, and again, I've already made my sequence here, so we can see that down below. What I'm now gonna do is uh, talk to you a little bit about what happens when you bring this audio in. How do you preview this audio? Well, despite what you may think, when you look at the audio here, and again, you can even see that there was some audio that was captured on the 360 camera, and I actually synchronized um, via our just audio, automatic auto sync. I synchronized the camera audio with the uh, multi-channel ambisonic audio. Ultimately though, um, you're only passing through one audio, one audio file here, one audio track of ambisonics. YouTube currently only supports one audio track of four channel ambisonic audio. I say four because again, based on that, uh, that ACN channel ordering spec that YouTube wants, there are others. There's four, there's, I think there's nine, there's 12, a whole bunch of different things. These will emerge, I'm sure, eventually. We're dealing, what we're dealing with now today is four, and frankly, that's all you really need um, to get that kind of spatial experience that you want. So once you have this in your timeline and you play this back, and I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I can play it for you. It's not like there's a heck of a lot of sound going on here. Um, you're gonna wanna use headphones, and here's why. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, if you just play this back and start moving around, now what you'd expect to happen is, is that the way that um, ambisonic audio is, is encoded when it goes to YouTube or wherever, is that it's basically simulating what we formerly knew as a kind of binaural audio experience. Binaural audio, something developed actually uh, at the end of the 19th century, if you can believe that kind of not really refined until the late 50s, early 60s, not used on an actual recorded album, official rock album, until the 70s. Lou Reed, I believe, had the first binaurally recorded album. How that was done was with a specific, um, like a mannequin head, 
an actual mannequin head, something you'd see in a department store. And uh, they had two very high intensity condenser microphones in the ear canals of the mannequin head. And the concept behind binaural audio was that within, all you needed by the way was a pair of headphones. This doesn't work on speakers, you need headphones. That it's going to capture sound the way that the human head, the human brain hears it and interprets it. And what that will ultimately do, based on how it's encoded, is that it go, it creates this sense of not just left, right, front and back, but top and bottom, all with two channels, okay? So why am I telling you all this? Because when you want to preview what this ambisonic audio sounds like, we have a specific effect that you're going to very quickly apply to the master channel here, the master fader inside of our audio track mixer for preview only. You will disable this. Are you listening? You will disable this. Take it out of the mixer when you actually publish to YouTube. Leave it in there, your, your audio is going to be hosed. So it's for preview only. Why I'm saying that again also is that if you're playing back and just kind of moving through this, the audio is not going to follow the video here. Okay, hopefully we see this at a later date somehow. Um, so what you're really doing is you're basically previewing to make sure A, that things are in sync and to make sure that the front, back, left, right perspective or sort of tilt up, down perspectives are correct and not flipped, okay? Based on however this was captured, however it was recorded. So here we are inside of the audio track mixer. Now again, to really preview this, you're gonna need a pair of headphones to hear what's actually happening. So if we go into the audio track mixer here, under special, you will see that there is a new preset called the binauralizer for ambisonics. And that's why I was just explaining to you about binaural audio. This is going to simulate what you will actually hear uh, once this gets published to YouTube. So if you turn on the binauralizer and you play this back, now here's something else that you might want to do, again, to kind of test to make sure that like the positioning is correct, so that you don't have to flip or move things around. If you go to the wrench menu inside of the program monitor here, I'm actually going to turn on my VR controls. Now I normally don't do that because of course it shrinks the view and it just doesn't look as pretty. But what's key is that it actually gives you coordinates. So this way, if there's something that's a bit off with that ambisonic audio file, this is going to tell you. So here's kind of the workflow that we've sort of implemented here to give you an idea of what this is going to sound like, okay? So we turn on the binauralizer and I play back the audio here. I'm gonna turn this on. Now, if you're in headphones while I'm doing this now, you're actually gonna to get to hear this. And as I start, notice there's a panner in here. So as I start to pan this around, let's say I go 180 degrees. Can you kind of hear what's happening in there? This also might make some of you a little, a little, little pukey, potentially. Binaural has that effect. But we're not dealing with left and right so much as we are, again, that, that complete spherical around your head experience. So if I wanted to ensure that, you know, when this was at negative 180 degrees, that it was the right audio, meaning that the, that the, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and the sound of the, of the ocean here should sort of be off to the, off to my uh, 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 left, rear left, when I listen to it now, let's see if we can get, I don't think there's any waves. <laughs> Again, this is kind of what we're testing for, and I can just kind of assume that the alignment is actually fairly correct here. Oh yeah, you can kind of hear it. It kind of sounds like it's kind of off to the side there, okay? Pretty cool, all right? So again, this is solely to preview positioning. Now, if you actually needed to make an adjustment here, because again, this binauralizer effect is solely for preview purposes only. If we go up to our actual effects, let me go ahead and pull the panel up here. And let's type in um, Ambi Sonics. You'll see that we have a new panner audio effect as well. You can do this at the clip level. I suppose you could also put it on the track level. I recommend the clip level just to kind of keep it clean and easy. And if we go into effects controls, now what you can actually see is that you've got keyframeable, not that you'll be keyframing it necessarily, but the ability to adjust pan 
again, so it's 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 not left right because you're we're working in in degrees, right? We're working in a sphere, but it's that spherical pan, spherical tilt, spherical roll, okay? And this is how you could effectively make an adjustment if somehow and really the most common thing would be that you're kind of 180 degrees flipped, right? Which is not impossible to do, particularly if you have uh, one of those um, one of those sort of multi-capsule microphones that's doing it all at once. Okay, so with the binauralizer still enabled, because again, you need that on to be able to hear what it is that you're modifying. Let's put this back to zero, okay? And then we could go into effects controls. And now that we have the ambisonic panner on the audio file here, if I were to play this back again and make adjustments to this, twirl this down here. Okay, if you're in headphones, again, you're kind of hearing what I'm doing. And you can see it's not a discrete left right type pan or the tilt. Roll this down. Ooh. Can you actually feel it going? It's going like this, okay? So this is how you can make corrections. You're probably generally never really gonna need to do that per se, but if it's your first time, you might. And you might anyway. So, panner for ambisonics, keeping the binauralizer enabled, all right? Now, the next week or two, I'm hoping to get the Sennheiser uh, multi-capsule ambisonic four-channel microphone, and then I'll be able to give you the, the real details on capture, you know, conforming the four mono streams um, into an encoded AmbiX format, and kind of all the ins and outs of doing that. So there, there will be a part two that's specific on kind of the authoring side and everything else. So now that we have this, now we want to talk about let's get out of here and export this to YouTube, render this out to YouTube. So as I told you, most important when you're working with ambisonic audio, make sure you either disable this, I just recommend taking it off. No reason to even leave it on there. Just get it out of there, all right? With our timeline selected, we're gonna go up to File, Export, Media. Here we are inside of Media Encoder from within Premiere. And as you saw again, based on the YouTube spec here, they want either QuickTime movies or MP4. Well, the cool thing is, uh, again, we've got you covered there. So again, based on, you know, if you're using the more standard um, HD, so thing like capture devices like Ricoh, uh, Theta, that's doing a standard 1920, 1080 uh, full HD. You could use the YouTube preset for that if you wanted. You'll also notice though that, again, we've got new VR presets that you can also use here specific to um, whether or not they have stereo or ambisonic audio. So if I wanted to choose something like this, okay, our over under 2880 ambisonics, I can choose that. I would probably recommend in the short term for your initial tests, use the YouTube presets. I'm just pointing out that again, this conforms to all of the different flavors and formats that we have. Now, let me just go to something like, go to something like that. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll keep it with this one here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so in talking about metadata, right? And remember, YouTube said you can use their metadata editor to make sure that this is properly displayed. Here's what we're already doing. So by default, it automatically detects. This was something that we added in last year's last release of Premiere, update to Premiere. Um, Auto-aware. So it knows that the video is VR. It knows the frame layout. It can work with it automatically all the metadata flags are in there. So when it goes up to YouTube, it knows it's VR. Now, give it time to process. When it uploads immediately, usually you don't see, if you don't see that like cross-haired, you know, four arrow thing in the upper left-hand corner of your video, doesn't mean it didn't work. Just make sure that you give it some time to process. Similarly, if you go to the audio tab here, all right, and scroll down. Again, when, it, remember, YouTube wants AAC, four channels. Now again, if you're using the standard YouTube presets, they don't have this automatically selected. That's okay. Just change it from stereo to 4.0. Also, they're looking for specifically a bitrate of 512 kilobits. 
You can see it even goes a bit higher. This is what YouTube wants though, okay? This is what they want. This is why you're seeing that there. And just like with VR video, 360 video, auto aware, we are also auto aware that the audio is ambisonic, okay? So with that checked, and again, it automatically detected that. Now, if it doesn't for some reason, you know where to go now. Audio tab, AAC, 48K, channels, four, bit rate, 512, check audio is ambisonics, and you're good to go, and Q or export. And then it's going to upload, you know, you own, oh, by the way, of course, you can publish it directly. So if I were, you know, I'm already logged in here, I could, in, from within the publish tab, I could choose YouTube. You can see I'm already logged into my account. Set your tags, description, privacy level, and it will upload automatically. Now, with Ambisonic Audio specifically, you know, again, the processing of, of 360 VR video takes a little bit longer on YouTube before it's displayed in 360. If you've got 360 video with Ambisonic Audio, it takes even longer for the Ambisonic Audio to kick in. So give it some time, all right? So you click Q or click Export to make it happen automatically and use all the resources in your system. And when you get over to YouTube and you play this back, bada boom, you're gonna have your 360 video with ambisonic audio. All right. So my friends, that is pretty much it. That's it. It's a pretty simple process, really. We'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one.